somebody call Auntie Rufus. My dear friend Trish and her brothers grew up with their Aunt Ruth, who has since become affectionately known as Auntie Rufus. Well, Auntie Rufus was famous for every time she would say or do something a little off color, she would exclaim, well, I'm going to hell for that one. And so her niece and nephews started joking every time they would do something a little off color or say something a little off color that they were going to have to call Auntie Rufus and uh, have her save a seat in hell for them when, they, when she gets there. Well, Auntie Rufus has sadly passed on. And so we have a texting group with Trish and her husband Mike and her brother Bruce and his daughter and my two kids and, and myself. And we send each other all kinds of funny stuff that we find on the internet or things we see on billboards. Or, and when one of us will post something a little off color, we will let everybody else know that we're calling Aunt Andy Rufus on that one. And sometimes when one of us posts something, and it's usually Bruce, posts something a little off color that he doesn't admit that he needs Auntie Rufus, one of us will remind him, you better call Auntie Rufus on that one. That one's a little bad. But we can joke about that because we all know we're not going to hell. I've preached that enough. They finally got it. But here's what's not funny. If you ask every Christian on earth, will tell you that Jesus Christ died to save our sins. That Good Friday and Easter, that that's what it's all about, is that Jesus died to save us from our sins. However, 60 to 75% of them will then go on to try to control you, intimidate you, and scare you with all this talk of hell. You know, they're the ones that put the billboards up. If you die today, do you know where you're going? Or they'll say, well, you know, you better get your life together. You better stop doing X, Y, and Z or you're going to hell. Or you better start doing A, B, and C or you're going to hell. Well, I want to scream. Because what they are doing by, by proclaiming that and living in that is they are totally negating Good Friday and Easter morning. I mean, if... If whether or not we go to heaven is dependent upon whether we're doing X, Y, or Z or not doing A, B, and C, why did Jesus come? Why did he leave heaven? Come down here and spend three years with doofus disciples who never really got what he was trying to get them to get. And then suffer the incredible suffering that he did on that Thursday and Friday. Die, be laid in a tomb... What did he do all of that for if it's still up to us? Well, here's the truth. It's not up to us. Because of Good Friday, because of Easter morning, it's over. It's done. And here's something really cool to hang your hat on. And I want you to remember this. When it, people got to church today, sitting on their seat was one of these. It's a bogus invoice with something stamped across it. One of the last things that Jesus said on the cross on Friday night, Friday afternoon, is it is finished. And that sounds like a defeat. My life is over. It is finished. But my friends, that was not a statement of defeat. That was a victory cry. And I am talking victory cry. Because that phrase that he uttered, that is translated into English as it is finished, is appropriately translated. But here's what we can't tell from the English. In Jesus' day and time, that phrase that he uttered had another purpose. It had a couple of purposes, but one of them was... When someone owed money, they had an outstanding bill. When it was paid off, that phrase was written on their bill. That phrase is the equivalent of our English language, paid in full. So, as Jesus is hanging on the cross near death, what he cries out is, paid in full.
paid in full. So here's what that means for you and I. It's over. It's done. The blood of Christ has set us free. And we are now free to live and live abundantly in him. Because we don't have to worry about where we're going when we die. It's already been decided. And people want us to fear judgment day. Don't be afraid of judgment day. Yeah, it's going to be uncomfortable because we are going to stand at the foot of God's throne and we are going to be faced with everything we should have done and didn't do and everything we shouldn't have done and we did do. And like a judge, God is going to proclaim us guilty as charged. But, as scary as that is, the next part is our victory cry. Because when he, when he deems us guilty as charged, he is then going to set us free. Because Jesus has already served our sentence. He's already paid our fines. He's already paid the price for our sins. And they are paid in full. So here's what I want you to do going forward. The next time Satan's sitting on your shoulder whispering those evil thoughts in your ears and making you feel guilty about everything that you've done or haven't done, you tell him it's none of his business. Because Jesus Christ took care of it. You are covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's paid in full. And the next time your family or your friends want to throw up your past at you, you tell them your past has been paid in full and your future is in Jesus Christ. Don't let them have that control over you. Don't let them do that to you. Not after Jesus gave his life for you. Now, does that mean you can run out and do everything you want to do and knowing that you'll go to heaven when you die anyway? Well, technically, you probably could. But I know you don't want to. And here's why you don't want to. Because now that we're free, free from trying to figure out how we're going to be good enough, we are free to live and walk with Jesus Christ and live into the abundant life that he gives us, the joy of God. Because we no longer have to worry about making sacrifices as on the altar to an, appease an angry God. We don't have to worry about whether our actions are good enough, running around trying to be holy enough or sanctimonious enough or whatever people are running around trying to be and do. We don't have to worry about any of that. So, you want to know what Friday was all about? You want to know what today is all about? You want to know why so many Christians are so happy today? It's because he is risen. And because he is alive, so can you be. And I'm not just talking about after your death when you get to live the next life. I'm talking about this life. You get to live fully into this life in his joy, in his abundance. Because you are free from the guilt and the sin and the shame of your human inadequacies. Because from the cross... Jesus Christ looked at you, looked at your judgment, your sentence, and from the cross he cried, it is paid in full. So go live life totally, because it's paid in full, my friend. Amen.